Hello and welcome to Fun with Creative Tech. So these are the second um, four videos in the series. So this time we're looking at how to make a simple interactive artwork using particle systems and a little bit of interface in Unity 3D. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, there's five introduction to Unity videos, which will just give you the prerequisite knowledge to do some of the things that I might skip over a little bit in these videos. So first up, what is a particle system? Now, a particle system is an object which spits out a whole bunch of different little particles um, which have different properties, so like color, speed, time, and that kind of thing. So let's set up our scene. So I've just opened a new Unity project with a blank scene. So I've just got my main camera and directional light here. So first up, I'm just going to create right click in my hierarchy and come down to particle system and that will create my particle system. Now remembering good habit is to zero everything out when you start off with so I'm going to set its position up here in inspector to zero 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 press F to focus on that and now that will center it in my game view. What I'm also going to do is drag my game view here to grab the tab and drag it to the side here and you'll notice that it will snap Unity's got a really malleable um, interface system, so it's easy to set it up how you like. This way we can see both our scene and what our camera is seeing. Now, our camera, we don't really want to see the skybox here because it's a bit hard to see our particles, so I'm just going to make that a flat black. So if we click on the camera, come across to the inspector, and then in the camera component here, under clear flags, if we select solid color, we then have access to this background color and we can change that to whatever we like. I'm going to go with black because it's easy, but you can choose whatever you like. Okay. Now, this here is our particle system. Now, you can see when I select the particle system, it the component looks slightly different to what you're used to. Um, that's because it's a relatively unique system in Unity. Now, it has a whole bunch of different variables here. Um, and what I'm going to do in these next few minutes is just quickly go through what some of the main variables do here, just to give you enough to start playing with and exploring what the particle systems can do. So first up, we can position our particle system. Uh, we can rotate our particle system and scale our particle system as well. Uh, so I might scale it down a little bit and move it down the screen. Okay, so we have a first things that are important are the lifetime. So we can change the lifetime of our particles to 0.5 and notice that they only last for point half a second to one. They last one second. Now, if I want to get a little bit of variation in here, what I can do is you see next to a lot of these variables here, there's this little drop down box, this little arrow. If I click on this, I can choose between a constant, so that's just a single value for all particles. So if I leave this at one, all of their lifetimes will be one. I can choose curve, and so this will choose a value along this curve randomly. Um, I can choose random between two constants or random between two curves. So I'm going to choose random between two constants and I'm going to change that to 0.5 and 3. So now you notice some of them only last a short amount of time, some of them last a long amount of time. Okay, and now let's do the same thing with speed. So I'm going to go random between two constants and I'm going to change that from, let's go 1, oh, one 2, 3. Now I'm starting to get a little bit more variation in the speed as well. Let's make that 6. Oh, well, not 63. Let's make that 6. And then start size as well. Again, I'm going to do random between two constants. And let's make that 0.3 to 0.8. Now it's starting to look a little bit more, a little bit more magical. Let's just scale that up, move it up a little bit. Um, now you have start rotation. Now because this particle here is round, you're not going to tell that it's rotated, but start rotation will change how your, um, how your particle is rotated. 
Um, gravity modifier, so this is a fun one as well. So if you put gravity on, the particles are affected by gravity. So if I put half gravity on, you notice they'll shoot up at the speed that they'll start at, but then gravity starts affecting them and they come back down. And put 0.2. And then you can choose a start colour as well. So if I want my particles to be blue, I've got blue particles. I'm going to leave them at white for the moment because what I'm going to do is edit the colour over lifetime in a second. Now, under the emission tab here, so you notice the, these, these different tabs underneath the particle system. If I unclick emission, it will stop emitting particles. If I click it again, it will start. And under here, what I can do is choose the rate of emission. So if I change that up to, say, let's go 30, it starts spitting out heaps more particles. It can go up to, you know, 100, and it's spitting out more and more particles. Um, you do have a maximum particle count here, um, which, you know, usually you can get away with quite a bit more than 1,000. Um, so if you notice your rate is, like, is too high and particles start disappearing, it's probably because your maximum particles is too low. Change that to 10,000, change rate back to 30. Now you can do emit over time or you can do emit over distance. So now um, when it moves or when it moves during play mode it will actually emit um, based on how far it's moved. So let's go back to time. Now shape, shape's a fun one. So under shape, we can choose the shape of the emitter. So when you have a look in your scene view over here, you'll notice that at the moment it's got this cone-like shape. So that chooses the base of where it emits from, how wide it emits, and scales the speed based on the length of the cone. So there's other ones, so we can choose sphere, so it just randomly emits from a sphere or in random directions. Uh, you can choose a circle as well. So in this case you can see it's emitting from a circle and I can make it just emit from the edge. If I turn the speed off to zero, you'll notice that it's just emitting from the edge there. Let's make that even bigger. I'll undo those. So I'm just doing Control Z to undo there. Um, and we can emit from a emit from a mesh. So if we have a mesh, we can emit from the mesh, um, or from an edge, which is just a, a straight line. So at this point, I might just keep stick with the straight line and go in here and let's just extend that out. that at the top of my screen and okay so the edge seems to have a direction here too so I'm going to angle that down and put my emission rate up to 100 so we get something nice like this okay now that we've done with shape and emission we can click on those to close them up let's do um, color over lifetime so color over lifetime has a gradient control in it. Now, oh, sorry, my recorder window's in the way there, so it's hard to get to. So it's going to have to stay up in the top left here. So you'll notice here you've got color tabs on either side. So on the top, you have what's called alpha, and that's how transparent an object is. So if I go ahead and modify the alpha, so I click this tab at the top left, uh, top right, sorry, and change the alpha down, you'll notice that it's fade. They're all fading out towards the end of their lifetime. So I can click to add another tab in here. So I turn it all the way up at the middle of its lifetime. Click at the start on this one and turn the alpha down. You'll notice that this starts faded out, fades in, and then fades out again over its lifetime. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to let's do this. Make sure it fades in quickly, goes to white, and then just fades out towards the end. Now you can do the same thing with color here. So I'm going to start with white, go to go through to a blue, and then maybe let's finish on a. Oh, that's, that's a terrible color. 
let's go darker blue there you go so that's how you edit a gradient um, now what else have we got here that might be worth looking at um, you can do size over lifetime too so that's another interesting one so this one gives you a curve modifier here so if you click on this this brings up a curve down the bottom here now with curves um, they're like bezier curves if anyone has had any experience with um, vectors or anything you can click and drag them around so notice this is defining the size of the particles based on their start size over time so time would be this bottom of the x-axis here so 0 is here and 1 is here of the maximum time so notice they're starting starting really small getting slightly bigger finishing large so let's do it let's go this way so they start large and then get smaller over time so if you want to edit a curve you can double click to add a point drag it around if you hold control it will snap and click and drag and it gives you these little handles too which you can modify um, if you want it to be completely flat you can right click and go flat now you'll notice that they start small get larger and then go to small again and I just wrangle that across a bit okay now there's a few other things you can play with in here under the render mode you can change to stretched uh, you can change it to stretch based on speed um, let's make that 0.5 make it uh, you can make horizontal billboard or vertical billboard so they'll always stay horizontal or vertical or you can use a mesh so in this case you'll notice that it's started using a cube mesh but because it's got a transparent material on it um, you can't quite see those cubes so what I'm going to do is in my materials folder is just create a new material uh, call it cube particle I might make that I'll leave it white for the moment and under the renderer here it has a material slot so if I click and drag that in there notice now my cubes have a white material so I can go ahead and change the values on this and there you go you have a cube particle system now cool that's it for this one next video we'll look at controlling the particle systems at runtime thanks